Hello. Welcome to my serious YouTube channel where I want to talk about things that I've been learning about, things that I think about and ponder upon throughout the day. And as I've been studying and reading books, I come to find things like the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the Bible to be really a fascinating feature. And if you're following this channel, then you probably know what kinds of things I'm reading, like Carl Jung, Jordan Peterson, and watching videos of those sorts, and having reflected on Jordan Peterson's commentary on these, on this part of Genesis, I'm, I come to a point in his video where he talks about why it is that in Genesis there's this tree that we're not allowed to eat from, this tree that's forbidden from our from our access to our access. This tree that has forbidden fruit, why does this exist in the garden? And, and he doesn't really give the kind of explanation that I think it could deserve. Now, the first human thing to think whenever we think about this forbidden fruit is well, why would God put something there that we weren't allowed to touch? Why would there be something there that we shouldn't seek if, if it's something that we want? What kind of God is this? And Jordan Peterson treats the text as a Gnostic might in that his his definition or his description is that it could have been a god that that wasn't that wasn't a good god or necessarily the god that we think of as good with our modern human our modern human minds and that could be one explanation but i think there's something else interesting about this this part of the text why why this tree that we're not allowed to eat from? And why our, why our aversion to this still being <clears throat> in the Bible or in the text? Why would this thing that offends us or this thing that makes us ask what kind of God, right? That type of entitled question. Well, that that should say something right there if we're offended by it. And it's pretty obvious that it's a very childlike nature. A childlike, it's a very childlike question. Well, why is there fruit there if, if I can't have it and I want it? And I think that's exactly the reason why it's in the text, you know, it's it's left there because it gets under our skin, and that is our fundamental nature as people. We see something we want, and we go after it without questioning what is it that we really want. And if we get it, will we be happy? Will it satisfy us? Do we know what we want? And do we know that what we're going after is what we're going to get? Because our vision is very limited. 
<clears throat> and so let's think about this text. Let's reflect on it. Just an evolutionary uh, reading. Let's give it an evolutionary reading. So Adam, I always try to think of Adam as sort of a primitive man. Sort of a Neanderthalish, uh, very, um, I'm not a very good evolutionary biologist, but I think of Adam as this man with very base carnal instincts, right? <clears throat> and so he's not, he's not very articulated, he's not very uh, civilized. He's not stupid, though. By no means am I saying he's stupid, because, well, I don't think that's the right word. I mean, he may have been closer to an ape in the evolutionary, um, in our evolutionary tree, but we don't think of monkeys as stupid. We don't think of animals as stupid. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. You can only be stupid if you have the potential to do something fantastic or smart or intelligent, right? Whereas we don't, we don't give those type of attributes to, um, to animals of lesser, um, lesser in the evolutionary um, timelines. So there, I'm sure there are some conflicting messages that I'm sending in there, but let's push on through. So Adam is a, he's a primitive man and he's, he sees a fruit that he wants. Or let's say Adam and Eve because it's Eve that goes after the fruit first. Eve sees the fruit that she wants and so she goes after it. She goes to get it. And Adam partakes of it with her. But let's think about what primitive men, what their limits would have been in eating fruit that they had never tasted before. There's all types of risky behavior involved in eating things that you don't know what you're going to get from it. That's a huge undertaking to, to go into eating something that you don't have any type of gathered collected information about and there can be very negative effects from that from just eating a fruit that you don't know anything about as delicious as it may look and so this also goes into uh, some other readings of the text in uh, the shamanic uh, tradition that there are a lot of ancient arts, um, art, artistic depictions of the fruit in the garden being a type of mushroom. And so uh, I'm not one to brush those off, you know. I'm not one to brush off any type of religious experience that, that people experience because I think that, you know, even if it is a type of ingested, induced uh, s religious experience, you know, from eating uh, a mushroom, you know, there's still validity to that. And so I, I want, I think that there's something to that being, um, it's, it's fascinating to think about, to say the least. Nonetheless, let's go back to the tree of fruit and going after this fruit that we think we want. <clears throat> we think we want this fruit that looks so delicious, but we don't know what we're going to get from it. And I think that's, I think that's why God put the tree there. To, to use the language of the Bible, God put the tree there and that that is in the text because we don't ever really know what it is that we want. And we never even know if we get what we want if we're 
really going to be satisfied by it because that's what we really want right we just want to be satisfied we want to be satiated we want to not long anymore but that's a bad thing to go after if, if we've not learned anything else from Jordan Peterson going after complete satisfaction or happiness is not the right aim and it won't get us what we really want because we don't even know what we want. So those are the thoughts I'm having and I'm sorry for this leaf blower or whatever the hell it is in the background. I'm gonna I'm trying to work out this channel to make make it uh, of good quality and I'm sorry it's I'm I, I'm I'm a little bit you know not gathered in my thoughts I'm just kind of exploring and using this as a sketchbook so as a sketch for future thoughts and future videos um, thanks for watching if you've stayed with me thus far and I hope to continue with the dialogue